Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maria from Kimono Club Denmark, and today we're going to show you a variety of different kimonos, both historical and modern and formal kimonos. So, without further ado, I would like to invite the first group on the stage. Music. starters, we are going to start in historical times with the historical kimonos. So, kimono fashion was quite the same until actually the early 19th century, which we call the Taisho era in Japan, which spans from 1912 to 1926. So, during this period, Japanese had quite a good economy, it was prospering, it was getting contact with the West, which also required that they could do much more than just regular trading, also fashion trading. At this time, more, um, more great, more better textiles, new weaves, new patterns, bold patterns was introduced with, with Western aesthetics. And not only within the female kimono began to d change at the time, the men's kimono changed as well because the men liked the idea of Western fashion. So during this time in the early 19th century, it was very common for Japanese men to dress traditional but adding Western accessories, as we can see on our two gentlemen, such as having a wristwatch or having a dress shirt and dress shoes with a hat to your kimono. <laughs> as well as female kimonos begin to change, the mason kimono became quite popular. Mason weave is made from the leftover silk of the cocoons of the, that produces a good silk. Originally, this silk was used for the uh, silk farmers to produce kimonos for themselves, but it became a very popular kimono to wear because the weave became more like this kind of, uh, what do we call it today, like, like this graphic mov movement that looks like it had like lines in the pattern, which is very interesting. Our female model on this side has this type of kimono. The Mason kimono was very popular all the way up to the mid-50s because it was a symbol of independent modern Japanese women to have a Mason kimono in this bold fabric. Could you turn, please? Thank you very much. Our female model. Her kimono is dated, is dated from the mid-50s, where the Mason actually went out of popularity. However, today we, will, we have seen like a great surface, resurface of these kimonos within kimono fashion. Same as the, the idea of men incorporating Western accessories is also something we see today in modern kimono. Our two gentlemen, their outfits is they <laughs> the fabric they're wearing is not from 1912, but they're imitating the fashion at the time. So please, can I have next group on the stage? So as I just said, this idea with incorporating Western accessories of bold fabrics and patterns in kimono is something we see today in modern kimono. We have jumped now to modern contemporary Japan, where like new people, new designers, when it comes to kimono, has tried to revive the idea of making more bold and non-traditional statements in the kimono. As we can see on our first model, we have a reuse of a vintage kimono by adding new accessories such as lace, long sleeve uh, gloves, and also like velvet obi. This type of like reusing old kimono and redesigning them, reshaping it, has become quite popular in Japan, which is also trying to help the kimono industry become sustainable. And we like that. Our second kimono is also a modern touch, and we can say it looks different from the other one, yes, but that's because it crocheted. Do everybody know what crocheting is? It's like this knitting, lace knitting. 
So my model is wearing this beautiful home and handmade crusade like kimono um, by our lovely designer here. Um, and it's also this modern touch that is actually see-through, but with, when with the whole see-through part, we can see the beautiful, very light pink under kimono on it that gives us this kind of subtle statement of modernity. Lastly, we have our beautiful ma male model here in a very modern kimono. So basically what his kimono is, you can turn as well, ladies. Um, it's made of modern fabrics, like the denim howdy, the denim jacket has become extremely popular in Japan today. And even not only the females is reinventing kimono in a modern way, but it's become extremely popular when it comes to the males. Bold patterns and more colors is something we see in male kimonos today. However, there's not many males that wear kimono today in Japan because most of them wear Western clothing but because of this new like contemporary modern ideas more men has begun have begun to like look at wearing kimono again thank you very much can i have the next group on stage Somebody's not ready for the show today. So our next group, we move into like what we call regular kimono or regular formalities. We are still in the casual end. These kimonos are the common kimonos. Common is by basically a kimono which is for everyday wear. Everybody can wear a common kimono in the everyday life. So as we can see, the common basically means that the pattern repeats itself all over the kimono, such as on the first model and the second model. However, on our third model, we go up a little bit in formality, like we can dress this kimono up to more social occasions. It's called an Edo Komon, which means it has a repeating pattern, but it's made of small dots. Unfortunately, you cannot see it, but it's very beautiful because it has these many cranes on it in small white dots. If you please turn. So the Komon is a kimono that can be worn by married and unmarried women or all social statuses. Um, and it does not have to be made of silk. The common kimono can be made out of linen, as we see on our middle kimono, out of silk, as the two other ones, the two purple ones, is made of silk. But it can also be uh, made of jersey, jeans. Jeans fabric is very popular today with actually within common kimonos. As well as you have to ha wear it, you can wear it in all time, times of the year, depending on the color, accessories, and so on. Thank you very much. we will have the more formal kimono or semi-formal kimonos. We will start talking about the first three ones, the pink one the black, and the two black ones. These kimonos are called homongi. Homongi kimonos basically means a visiting kimono and was one of the most important kimonos a, a fem Japanese female could wear after, especially after marriage because these kimonos were the ones you would wear in order to go on visits and other social occasions or you could dress it off if you had a social occasion that required you to show a certain level of respect. So the way we can actually recognize a homongi is that it has pattern on the left shoulder, on the right, sh right shoulder, on the back and below the waist as we can see on all three of them. 
So these kimono can be dressed up and down depending on the obi, the obi age, and the obi jime, which is the accessories that actually helps you make the kimono formal or not. So mostly what we say about a homangi is that a female should have at least three different types of obi and obi accessories to the homangi so they could dress it to any social occasions. You can dress it for weddings, dinners and even shrine visits with the kids in the Sichiku San, which is when you go to shrine visits with your kids at the age of three, five and seven, which is portrayed with the small kids here. Aren't they cute? Our last pink kimono in the end is called a Iro Muchi. And Iro Muchi is the formal kimono primarily worn at tea ceremony. It's a kimono that has only one color all the way through. However, in the weave of the fabric, you can find intricate patterns, which is called a Rinsu. So the idea with the Irumuji when you go to tea ceremonies is that like the homangi you can basically um, dress it up and down but it can also wear, you can also have your family crest on it that makes it a formal kimono. But I, re I will return to these family crests later. Thank you very much. second last group is the most formal kimono for unmarried women. These are typically the kimonos you will meet in like anime, manga and Japanese like dramas, uh, tourist commercials and so on. It's the one with the long sleeve which is called furisore. Furisore basically just means swinging sleeves. As we can see with the long sleeves, when you walk the sleeves will like uh, wave in the wind and give off this beautiful swinging motion. The furisore is often very elaborate in its pattern um, and with a lot of auspicious motifs on it. The obi is accompanied, as you can see on all the models, is very much metallic in golden and silver color with heavy brocaded patterns which gives off this idea of formality. Often young females will wear these kimono at the coming of age ceremony in Japan, which is often held when, originally when they turned 20, but in 2018 they, they changed the coming of age to 20 years old, like 18 years old. So today it's at 18, they will go in January, all, all the young people that was turned 18 this year will go and be, have this ceremony together, often the females in these and the males in suit. Some of them have begun to wear kimono, but that's when you often see them. But these kimonos, because they're so intricate and beautiful, is quite expensive. Originally, these kimonos would be inherited through, down through the family, either from mom to daughters, or aunts to nieces. However, because they're so expensive, mo that today we mostly rent the kimono for the coming of age. Or if you have these kind of matchmaking ceremonies when you are getting married or meeting your fiance's family, you can wear them. Would you like to turn around, ladies? And stop. Stop. So, as you can see, the bows on the furisori are extremely beautiful and big. There is tons of styles, imitating roses, rabbits, um, different flowers. As we can see here, we have a big, what we call a bunko musubi, which is like this big bow, which is often uh, was popular back in back in the days, but it's come popular again. The rest, all like the middle two um, kimonos, has what we call a lucky bag. Bunko Musubi, which is basically uh, a Musubi, an obi knot that like imitates these kind of um, money bags or lucky bags you have like in China. I don't know why it's supposed to be from China, but it's, it's, it's like this little red bag that is very popular in Japan. You can turn around again, ladies. So the thing is, because they're so expensive, so often if um, you would keep a furisore 
in your family and you get married and don't have a daughter to give it to. Some of them had patterns that matches the homongi. So as if you look at our light blue one and our dark blue one, the patterns is the same places like below the waist and on the on the shoulder that fit the homongi. So the married woman could actually cut off the sleeve and still use the kimono after marriage. Thank you very much. Our last segment is the bridal kimono and her mother or mother-in-law. So first what we see at the black one is what we call the kuro tomisore, the black short sleeve kimono, which is the most formal kimono for, fe for married females. This kimono is something you would only use within if somebody in your family is getting married, such as your niece, your cousin, um, your, or your daughter or son. And the way we can recognize this kimono is not only by its beautiful, beautiful black color, it's also with the beautiful red, golden and silver patterns below the waist and the five family crest on the kimono. Haley, can I get you to show up? Yeah. So as you can see on the model, there are two white dots on each shoulder. And if I can get you to turn one in the back and also one on the two arms. These crests is what is placed in and is called kamon. It's like these family crests that shows which clan or family branch you are from. You have special symbols for that. And this kimono, the more like family crest that is on a kimono, the more formal it is. And as this one being the most formal you can wear, of course, have the five kamon, which is the top for females. This kimono is always adorned with a light, beautiful golden and silver obi, white obi age on the top, a golden and white obi jime, and as well a little fan which is gold and silver. Inside the onda kimono is white as well, which is different from the rest of the kimonos which have often a colored onda kimono on. It is in order to show even outside but also inside how formal this kimono is. Lastly, we have our beautiful bride. She is wearing a kimono, which is called a furisore kakeshita, and the outer robe, which is called a uchikage. Normally, when you see a married woman in Japan or a bride, you will see this white kimono, right? I think a lot of you have seen this one. It's called the Shirumuko. Yeah, that's the one you typically wear for the shrine ceremony. But when you go back at and have the wedding party instead, the bride will often train like will often change into this beautiful colored kimono and outer robe, which is called Iro, colored robes. So we have a Iro Uchikage and a Iro Kakeshita, which is the kimono. Both kimono both parts of the kimono is heavily embroidered. As you can see under here in the bottom, all this is not colored on as a regular furisore. Normally they have dyed their pattern on, but on kakeshita, they are hand like, uh, what's it called, Bro embroidered and brocaded. Same goes for the long outer rope, which is very heavy. Um, and also hand embroidered. If I can get the bride actually to turn around to show the back of the jacket. And if you take your arms out, there we go. Then in, on the back of this beautiful robe, first you can see the hem. The hem is padded because the idea is that when you walk with it, you can actually use it as a train. It's a left, kind of a leftover or a remnant from old samurai times where noble females would wear these outer robe and drag them along after them. So the padded hem helps to keep the kimono in shape and not be too worn. However, what is most important is that these beautiful cranes and phoenixes we have on this this outer robe, all these auspicious symbols is for wishing the bride good luck, long life, longevity and happiness. And it's very important on the bridal wear that all these important 
Simple is there in order for the bride to have a good long wedding life. Wedded life. So, can we turn A? So, when taking the robe off, we can see the kakeshta. It looks like the other food is sorted. However, the hem of this one is also padded with a very thin little thick hem. The idea of this is also that the kakeshta is supposed to be able to be dragged after. It was raining today, so we could not do that, unfortunately. However, today this type of kimono is not very popular to get married in because it's heavy. But instead, a lot of like Japanese females choose to have an, what we call a hiki furisore, which is a mix of a kakeshta furisore and a regular furisore. So it's a furisore that has a padded hem, but not these heavy, like embroidered patterns that makes the kimono quite heavy. So this, this pattern, as we see today, is actually from the 1980s, so it's quite old. And I think actually this year it turns vintage. So it's really, really cool that we can show off such an old bridal ensemble to you guys today. So I will just say thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time today and we Kimono Club Denmark hopefully will be back next year in good weather to show you more kimonos where we can actually be on the lawn and you can see them more properly. Thank you very much.